Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've been looking at just the hydrogen atom, the Bohr atom, and that's a very simple atom because it only has a single proton as its nucleus and a single electron in one of the orbits. And so the interaction is simply between two particles, the electron and the proton, and so we have the Coulomb's law relationship and the the, uh, what we would call the centripetal force. And when we set those equal to one another, we can develop a lot of the equations describing the velocity, the radius, and the energy of, on, of any one of the levels. But how does that work for an atom which is a little bit more complex, such as a helium atom or a lithium atom? Well, the difference is not the nucleus so much, because in the helium atom we have two protons, in the lithium atom we have three protons in the nucleus, which still acts like a single particle, we have more than one electron in the orbits, and so not only do the electrons interact with the nucleus, they also interact with one another. And as there's more and more electrons in the orbits, that interaction becomes very complex very, very quickly. And so the equations no longer work for these kind of situations. However, if we were to remove one of the electrons, for example, if we take this electron and we remove it away from there, or we take two electrons from lithium and we remove them. In other words, if we singly ionize helium and we singly and we doubly ionize lithium, we now have a situation that looks very familiar, looks very similar to a hydrogen atom, with the difference is that we now have more protons in the nucleus, two for helium and three for lithium. So how does that affect the equations? Well, for one, the equations work exactly the same as before because we now have, again, the interaction with only two particles. So the centripetal force equals the Coulomb force. The difference is that the Coulomb force will now be stronger because we have two protons instead of one or three protons instead of one. How does that affect the equations? Well, first of all, when we go back to hydrogen, for the first energy level, we were able to calculate the energy level using this equation. We plug in the numbers, we got minus 13.6 electron volts for an electron being in the innermost orbit of the, um, of the hydrogen atom. And for other orbits, for E sub n, where n represents the orbits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so forth, we knew that the energy was 1 over n squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. It turns out for the helium atom, which is singly ionized, meaning we remove one of the electrons, so there's only one electron left, now we can calculate the energy or for any of the levels, and it's going to look exactly the same as the equation here, except in the numerator we have a z squared, z representing the atomic number. So for helium, z is equal to 2. When we plug in a 2 or square it, we can see that the energy of the innermost energy level is four times the energy for hydrogen. And for each of the subsequent levels, you can see again, it's four times what the energy would be for a hydrogen atom. So four times 13.6, that's, uh, that's 54.4 electron volts. So the innermost energy level for helium would be minus 54.4 electron volts for an electron being in the first energy level. And then when we go to lithium, lithium, again, the same thing is the case. We have a z squared in the numerator. In this case, z is equal to 3, the atomic number of lithium. So that becomes 9 times the energy that we have for the hydrogen atom. So the only difference is for helium, if it's singly ionized, we multiply it times 4. For lithium, if it's doubly ionized, we multiply it times 9. 9. And the very same equations that worked for us before will work in the case of helium and lithium, in the case of there's only one electron left in the atom. So theoretically, that makes a lot of sense. It helps us understand the structure of the atom even more, but then we realize that once there's more than one electron in the orbits and they begin to interact with one another, things become very different very quickly and much more difficult to try and explain mathematically. Make an attempt at that in some later videos, but at least this is what the structure looks like in the most simplistic form of the atoms with only one electron in each case for hydrogen, which is normal, of course, helium and lithium. And that's how it's done.